Hey guys, Procrastination Gaming here and welcome to the channel. This is going to be a different kind of video today. I have been waiting for this thing to come in the mail so I could record on my PlayStation 3 for quite a while now and it finally got here today. And yeah, I've been wanting to make this kind of video for quite a while. This is going to be kind of a guide on just how to recruit in Dynasty mode on NCAA 14. So to start off here, we're just going to create a new coach just to get things rolling here just so I can show you guys how this is going to work. Now obviously with your playbooks and stuff, you can kind of do whatever you want, but I like to make my own playbook. And after playing with the team for a couple years, you should be able to get a good idea of what you want to run. And you can always adjust the playbook that you want to run. Alright, so basically before we start this, we're just going to go into rules and difficulty and change this the set coach level we're gonna start at level three and basically after a few games you should be at about level three and once you get to level three you should have three in recruiting you should really only spend points in recruiting and the coaching tree is really all that's important and once you get to level three this is where one of the most efficient ways to recruiting comes into play now obviously if you're gonna be doing a small school it's better to move your school into a better conference just because it actually helps you recruiting quite a bit Say you're playing in the MAC, you're not going to be on TV all the time, and there are a lot of recruits that want to be on TV as one of their top three things. I think Central Michigan is a pretty good team to do. I usually like to do teams that have cool uniform options, and Central Michigan definitely has a lot of nice uniform options. So we're just going to take Central Michigan, and we're going to move them into the Big Ten just to make things more competitive, and that will also help us with recruiting. All right, so let's go here. Let's go find our Central Michigan team in the Big Ten. And there they are, head coach. We're gonna pick head coach, obviously. All right, so here's what's really important. When you're progressing through the coaching tree, make sure the first thing you do is unlock scouting all three. And this is why I basically, I'm just gonna skip to week four and act like I already played those four games and I had already unlocked coaching level three. All right, so when you go into recruiting here, what I like to do is go to all prospects. I don't really ever go through search because you can basically search through all those filters right here. And really, a lot of times, a three-star prospect will have a higher overall than a four-star prospect, so it's not really that important. Right, so when you get into this recruiting board, what you're going to do is most people, what they do is they just go by interest level, and then they add these guys, and then after this point, they scout them. Actually, what you want to do is press triangle if you're on the PS3 or Y if you're on the Xbox for more info, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to look at these pitch info. And this pitch info is very important because this is what is going to give you your weekly points when you're scouting them. And this is actually the most important factor if you're going to get the guy or not. This will save you a lot of time and a lot of points wasting on these five-star athletes that aren't even interested in your school. A lot of times those five-star athletes won't have any interest in your school and you can put 700 points in them and they will not budge on their interest. So as you maybe have guessed, you can actually do the same thing with these five-star athletes. You just press more info and as you can see their proximity to home and playing style, we are actually pretty good. So you basically have to find one of these guys that has a decent chance for you to get. I basically aim for B or B plus and everything and you should have a chance at getting that guy. So basically what I'm gonna do is just keep scrolling down and press triangle every time. And you can do this a few different ways. You can go by caliber, or you can also go by 40 time if you want. That's something I do sometimes. But as you see here, here is one that has proximity to home, playing time, and program tradition, which program tradition, all you have to do is win a few games and that'll actually go up pretty quickly. So this may be a guy that you might want to add to your recruiting board. But as you can see, this guy, the number two overall halfback, his most important thing is proximity to home. You could be able to get this guy, but it wouldn't be as easy as the other one because he's never going to budge on that proximity to home. Now for running backs, all you have to do to increase playing style is run the ball more and have success doing it. So if you're getting 100 yards a game through all your running backs, you will actually have an A plus in playing style for running backs. Now obviously with pro potential, it's not going to go up until after you get guys drafted. So this is probably not a guy I would go after. Dang, so now we found a 6'6 six six receiver, 205 pounds. Um, looks like a 4 star, but he's a, if he's actually a 75 overall, that's really, really more like a 5 star. And if his program tradition can obviously go up with us winning a couple games, this is definitely a guy we could be able to get. So we're definitely going to be adding this one to the board. All right, so I actually forgot, but your first week of recruiting is actually pretty dang important before you move on. And the first thing you want to do is make sure everyone on your board is scouted. 
So what you're going to do here is go to not scouted and make sure that says zero. And if it doesn't say zero, scout everyone on this list. Because it's you do not want to spend points on players that you do not know everything about because that's a waste of time. Then what I like to do after that is I like to go to this main list, press square, and then go over to overall because this will make the highest overall players at the top of your board and obviously the lowest at the lowest and this makes it a lot easier for me to kind of remember where my best players are and eventually the top of this list will have a lot less players because you'll know who you won't be able to get after the first couple of weeks so basically here what you want to do is you want to look for good players and you also want to look for players that you can get easily first what I like to do is look at the players you might be able to get easily now if we look here Daryl Hood and if you look there we are getting 290 points per week and the highest on there is Oregon State at 315. So it's only week one, but I'm basically guessing that they're probably putting less than 100 points on him. And 150 should be enough for me to catch up and get the lead. Now, after you advance a couple weeks, you will notice how much you are changing by here. It'll say minus or plus, whatever. And then you just add, a, say it says minus five then I would probably add 105. So basically what you want to do is make it so you're getting 100 more points than the top team. That way you'll be in a pretty good position by week 13 and week 14 because that's when the visits come in and that's when you will get most of your recruits. Now here we found another guy, Jamal Williams, a center, 67 overall, pretty good. And as you can see, we are getting 310 to start out for a week. And the next highest is actually only 280. So what we're going to do... So what we did here is we basically just offered him a scholarship and we're going to wait it out for a couple of weeks and see if we're, any other teams are gaining on us. And if they are, then we have kind of a cushion where we can just add points on top of that. And if I go through the rest of the list here, there's a couple other players that I think I should be able to get fairly easily that added a few points to and also added a scholarship. And also when you're doing this, give everyone a scholarship that you're adding points to because I think it actually helps you in the long run if you offer them a scholarship early. Now after you find a few players that you will get fairly easily, what you wanna do is find a balance between the best players on your board and the players that you think you could be able to get possibly. Now if you look at this player, Robert Hearn, if you see Alabama there at 360, we are only at 170, so I'm probably not even gonna try to get this guy because there's a lot better options out there. Obviously, as you can see, there are players that we could be able to get that I have already decided. But I will say, sometimes you will see, after a week, you will only lose 110, and that means Alabama is not putting anything on them. And if you see that, go ahead and add 250 to him, and you'll get him, eventually. Now for this guy, we are actually down by 135, but the reason I'm putting these points into him is because he has 96 speed, which is outstanding. Um, especially for a guy like a freshman that could come in and start. I mean, that could have a huge impact on your team and definitely help you down the road. So like I said, you want to find a balance between the players that will help you the most and the players that are easier to get. All right, so after that, what you actually want to do, once you've spent all of your points, you want to go back into recruiting here and go to recruiting strategy. And what you want to do is have recruiting board assistance off and scholarship offer assistance off because a lot of times the computer will give a scholarship to like a 61 overall quarterback who really likes your team and then he'll commit and you'll be like, where did this guy come from? And then you'll just wind up cutting him, but this wastes a scholarship and you only get 25 scholarships per year. And this can really hurt you in the off season when you're pushing for a few players and you only have like three spots left sometimes. When you leave this on, it hurts you in the long run. So turn this off for sure. And then what also I like to do is this visit assistant. I usually leave it on because basically the computer will decide when to schedule your visits. And when you do this, I found that it actually chooses pretty good times. Um, sometimes if you want to get that last spot, you will actually miss out because it sometimes it doesn't give you that opportunity to have the last spot. And the last spot's the most important. But if you leave this on, you will never miss out on a prospect getting a visit. And that's why I leave it on. I think there's probably better ways to do it, but I think with this way, you really don't have to worry about getting a scheduled visit. And most of your visits with this will fall between the weeks of like 12 and 14. All right, and after that week one recruiting, we did spend all of our points in week one, but obviously we spent a lot of those points on scouting. So now we have quite a few more points to spend, and we can also look at our boards to see what's happening. 
So as you can see here, that running back I really wanted to get, we're not going to be able to get him. So we're going to take points off him right away. There's no point in going after him. You have no chance. If you're behind 300 something points, you have absolutely no chance because that top team is putting like 600. But as we look here, we actually are not going to be able to get this Shane Booth guy. But as I said earlier, there's a good chance you'll be able to get one of them. And look at Goodman here, you're definitely going to be able to get him. So what we're going to do here is just remove points from Shane Booth. And now look, we're only spending 2850 and we're going to get our quarterback by a lot. And I would actually take some points off of him right now because you definitely have him locked up. You're plus 560. That's insane. Now just to be safe here, I'm going to bring this down to 300 because the quarterback is definitely the most important position. And you can adjust this week to week as you see it changing. You can move this down, move it up. But I'm way ahead of them, so we're just going to stay with that for now. All right, so here's another case of where I would probably take points off. You see this guy is plus 410, and you're definitely gonna be able to catch the next team. But I'll probably leave it on here just because it's a 92 speed running back and we missed out on the other guy. All right, so now that I've removed a ton of prospects, what we're gonna do is play this game because when you play games, it changes your play style and that's very important for a lot of players as well as changing your coach prestige and your championship contenders. So we're gonna go play this game here and then come back after hopefully a win. All right, so after that game, we did have a win. It was against Toledo, so it wasn't that hard of a game, but yeah, now we're gonna go into the recruiting. This is week three, so this is kind of the week when you really know what's going on with recruiting. Right, so as I had feared, this is a guy we're probably not gonna be able to get right now. Um, we, only, we have 400 points on him. Our max is 500, so I don't think that's going to be able to catch up with 270 there. We're not going to be able to get him under any circumstance, so we're going to just remove him from the board. And here we have our quarterback where we only have 300 points on him, but we're winning by 460. So we're actually going to bring this down to 100 and just see what happens at that point because that's more points that we can put on other players. All right, so now we're just removing players that we know we're not going to get or aren't worth the points to spend to get. So basically we're just going through here and looking at these players. If you look here, here's a 68 overall tackle or minus 500 points. I mean, we could add 500 and we'd only be gaining five per week. And he's only a 68 overall tackle. That's definitely not worth it. Your points are better spent elsewhere. Now here on Daryl Hood, you can see 260 is what you need to catch up. We're actually gonna put, I think, Think we're gonna max him out just because he's such a good player and I think it could be very important for us to start out this dynasty having a safety like that then we have this center we're only gaining 10 points per week and we're already behind 560 now if you look at his bonus points you can't really change any of these things playing times already a plus um, so the other team probably has a pipeline that's probably why they're so close and yeah, maybe this is one of those guys that you would drag out into the off season and then put points in. But if you continue going after this guy, you will be right there with Arkansas the entire time because you're gaining 10 points in Arkansas every week. So by the end of the season, you'll probably be very close or you might have actually caught him if Arkansas decides to take some points off. And obviously, once you get the ability to put 700 points on a player, it makes this a lot easier to get some of those players. Like a player like this center would be a heck of a lot easier if I could put another 200 points on him, but I can't. I obviously would if I could, because then you'd know for sure you'd be able to lock him up before the offseason. Now, if we look at a guy like Marquise Rogers, 300 points, and we're down by 225 every week. Now, if we look at his bonus factors here, obviously playing time is not going to go up. It'll actually maybe go down, because I think the only thing that affects that is the overall at that position on your team. So obviously if your player goes up and overall through the course of the season because his awareness is going up, playing time can actually go down in terms of their bonus factor. And obviously if you look at the rest of this recruiting class, we already have that other really good safety. And honestly with this guy, that 94 speed and 80 hit power, he's probably gonna be a better player than this Marcus Rogers, even though Marcus Rogers um, is still a pretty good athlete. He's not as good. Um, so. You could put all of your points into him and maybe get him, maybe drag it off into the offseason. But I'm going to remove the points from him because that means you can find more guys like this Kirk Goodman. I mean, those 300 points, you could find maybe three more guys just like this where you only have to have, add a few points every week. 
And obviously, this guy could be a great safety, but he's going to be a quarterback for us. But obviously, you can get guys just like this and put him at safety as well. And after pounding that over, I've actually convinced myself to remove Jamal Williams here. I mean, we do have A-plus in almost everything. But if you look here, we're only gaining 10 points per week. And that's probably not going to change. So we're going to take these points off of him. And that's a lot more points that we can use to spend on other players. But then if you look at a guy like... Calvin Green, if you look at his program tradition, it's only a C plus, but obviously we keep winning games. We should be able to get some more points here. And we're only losing by 40 each week. Um, so we should maybe be able to catch up with him. So I'll leave my points on to him for a few weeks and just see what happens with that one. Right, so at this point, when you've basically decided how much points you need to put on each player and you have these extra points left over, you just go back into all prospect and you find some more players. And another way you may find guys that are easier to get is you go by lock percentage. Um, usually by midseason, there will be a lot of guys around that 20% and a lot of guys around that 70%. And there won't really be a whole lot of guys in the middle. So you will be able to look at guys like this and look at their lock percent. And that could give you a good indicator that teams are not putting points on them. You can also do this by caliber. So if I go down here at the highest caliber players and I look for a guy with like... 14% lock there's a good chance you might actually be able to get him just by dumping all your points into that guy now here we have Joe Porter and obviously he's not the super interested in a school but if you look championship contender all you have to do is win games and also program tradition all you have to do is win games so you I would probably add this guy just to see what happens because at this point these are the kind of guys you're looking for all right and after that second wave of prospects that you added and scouted and then you advanced week after that um, you should find a few guys that you look like you might be able to get like you look here we have that plus 300 in this guy um, there's a good chance we'll be able to get him if we put a lot of points in him look at this guy same case here and then if you look at this safety Carl Jude we are actually all the way up to second place now so there's a very good chance we could get him hopefully you're gonna be adding a few good players every time you do this I mean, it looks like we found four guys here. We found this corner, too. We should be able to get no problem as well. So that's four players that we did not have before. And we just removed all the players that were going to be extremely hard to get or we would not be able to get. And now we found four guys we should be able to get. So that's kind of what you want to do throughout the season. You want to advance a couple weeks. And then eventually you will find that you have exhausted all of your points and you have all of your guys on your board you should be able to get and once you get to that point you don't really have to worry about recruiting for the rest of the season but obviously as you get ex more experience with this it might come a little sooner so yeah basically probably for Carl Jude I will put maybe 200 um, it looks like we're definitely gaining pretty quickly there on Washington so we're not gonna put a whole ton of points and then we look at this corner here, uh, probably the same case. Maybe I'll add 300 in this one just because we're so much farther behind. Just because there's two teams there, I would do that. And then on the other two, I will actually put 500 just to be safe, just to see what it would look like after another week. And yeah, there were a few other guys down here that we might be able to get. Looks like this guy, we're going to add about 200. We should be able to get him. But there were some other guys that we did add and we won't be able to get. Basically, you're just going to remove those and keep repeating the process until you've exhausted all of your points. And I guess I didn't mention it earlier, but obviously each time you're doing this, you're going for a lower tier player. The first time you go through your prospects, you're going for all five stars and all really fast players. And obviously, if you find like a mobile quarterback or something, you're going to be going for him. But yeah, the first tier is definitely like those guys you see being starters right away. Um, super impactful players I would go for like the first wave I would go for like all 75 overall players are better um, sometimes a little lower depending on the position and how fast they are maybe and one more thing to look out for towards the end of this season when everyone's going through their visits you might want to change around your points because sometimes teams will jump you if they get like a thousand point visit they might jump you by, you know, a couple hundred points. And then you might want to add some extra points on there just to make sure that you get them. But obviously, by that time, you will have some commits and you'll have more points to throw around anyway. So it's not really that big of an issue. Just something to look out for once you have all those visits coming through. You, you might want to adjust the points a little bit. 
And then finally, obviously, once you get into the off season, what I really do is I just look for two or three more players. I try not to spread it around too much because by that point, I already have, you know, 10 or 15 really good guys. And I'm just looking for like that kicker or that one player that you need for the roster. And maybe it's a really good receiver or a really good corner or something you want. I would probably split your points between two or three players because a lot of times the CPU would jump dump a ton of points into one player and you will have no pointing you will have no chance in getting them unless you add a lot of points and hey guys this has been my guide on how to recruit in NCAA 14 Dynasty obviously we are only in week four right now and we have about 15 guys almost that we are pretty much going to get um, and we also have points. We have a thousand points extra that we could go look for more guys right now. And then after we go through that next group, that we'll obviously remove a few and probably add a couple and go do the same thing over. And by the end of the season, you should be able to get 15 to 20 guys that are really good. Um, and this should work pretty well for pretty much any team. All you're pretty much looking for is you're looking for guys that are high overall at first. And after that, you're just kind of shuffling through what's left until there's nothing left. And eventually you will have a good roster put together, a good class, and you should be able to fill out your class of high prospects pretty much every year. But hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.